Good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for being with us uh, this afternoon. Coming up, government in a tough war with independent power producers over a proposal to restructure the over $1 billion owed them. It's our position known emphatically regarding the debt restructuring that we are not open to that. We are open to a discussion, discussing uh, the payment plan of our arrears. Also coming up, Finance Ministry begins process to restructure pension funds worth 31 billion Ghana cities in final phase of domestic debt exchange program. Plus, government expects positive results from most of the economic policies undertaken to stabilize the economy, but some experts are skeptical. Now we are using revenue, total revenue, to pay compensation and interest, even when we default with interest. So where is where are you going to get a borrowing? Even in our own domestic markets. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. Thanks for being with us. First up, government is in a tough war with the independent power producers over a proposal to restructure the over $1 billion owed them. John News is learning a proposal for debt exchange has been presented to the six IPPs for study and approval, and some have already committed to the deal. In all, government is hoping to restructure over $2 billion or 23 billion cities debt in the energy sector. Despite the moves by government, a chief executive of the Chamber of Independent Power Producers Eli Plim at Tokbogo uh, says they will re not restructure the debt. We've made our position known emphatically regarding the debt restructuring that we are not open to that. We are open to a discussion, discussing uh, the payment plan of our arrears. You know, when we are talking about debt restructuring, uh, it's a question of what do you want to restructure. We have made our position known that our arrears in questions relates the cost of our services. And also, we indicated that our arrears are actually obligations that we have owed to our stakeholders, particularly the lenders. Again, suggesting that implies that IPPs have some free cash flow over there for which we are pressing them to accept a debt restructure, which is actually not the case. So for that restructuring, we are sure, I'm sure to tell you that it's not a position in the IPPs to accept. All right, on Zoom with us is uh, Dr. Yusuf Sulemana, who is an energy strategist, also chief executive of Eureka, an energy consultancy firm. Uh, great to have you. We're going to be talking about the media budget in a bit in uh, well, matters concerning the energy sector. First, though, your reaction to this uh, latest development to do with the restructuring of debt owed IPPs. Uh, does it appear a good deal uh, tackling the indebtedness of the IPPs? Yeah, good afternoon to you, uh, Darren, and good afternoon to your voice in Ghana and across the globe. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, this, is, uh, this is very interesting, and, uh, um, and I find it still unfortunate at this moment in time this task has gone on for almost two months now, and there seems not to be any, any sight. And I find it very worrying, because at the end of the day, Darrell, there's always a saying that if two elephants are fighting, it is the grass that suffers. The grass here is with the populace in Ghana. If they are not able to come out with a deal in all this war for almost two months, then when are they going to come to any deal? So that's my worry, the worry part of it. But the way I see it, it, it's almost looking like they want one one party wants to make the move and the other party is not willing to make any move and so in such a situation like that somebody has to extend the helping, helping hand and in this case they have to look at the populace who is who is who is who is, who is supposed to stand to benefit is it the government is it the ipp or is it the population of ghana so what i want to urge is that 
I mean, debt restructuring is not anything bad, especially if it will lead to sustainability of the economy. And then, but that should not also impact the IPPs to the extent that they will not, they will be knocked out of business. So this has to be very clear. So what I think is uh, that, uh, like the, the chief executive rightly mentioned, I think things are not very clear. I'm talking about the IPPs, uh, chief executive. I think things are not very clear. Maybe they are not sure which part of the debt they are going to, to, to restructure. So probably we have to segment it. Maybe government has to make commitment that I want to pay this aspect of the money and then restructure this. I believe that's not what's, that's what is not happening. I, I don't think it's just saying you are going to restructure 100% of the debt when you have not made any commitment. So going forward, what I want to urge government to do is to extend some kind of, you know, um, 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 good faith in making, make, making available some portion of what is due them. If that is the case, then maybe 80%, maybe uh, let's say 30%, and let's say let's structure the 70%. Other than that, it looks like we're in inertia. And what I also see within the IDPs, I don't know, I don't want to say whether they are cracks or whatever, because on one hand, government is saying some of them are okay, and they are, they are, they are signing on to the debt restructuring. And on the other hand, the chief executive is saying they are not doing that. So the IPPs, what I want to urge them, they have to work in unison, and they have to have united front. Other than that, I mean, this task is going to go on for uh, God knows when. Mm. And the development, I will, I'll be frank with you, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not very pleased at this many time that we don't have any end in sight. And the high time they come to an agreement, the better, you know, for the population of Ghana. Well, one of the issues we were hoping to hear in the media budget was a clear plan in uh, tackling uh, the debts of the IPP. Uh, the debt has hit $2.2 billion, uh, and government has indicated that uh, is willing to comply with the cash waterfall mechanism working di dictates. So how is that helpful in dealing with the debts or the IPPs? Yeah, so that is just a uh, part of it. And I think that's also key. And I was that's one of the things that I saw in the budget that uh, that, that gladdens me. Because over the years, uh, I'll tell you emphatically that what has contributed, I mean, one of the components that has contributed to where we are in terms of this quantum of debt is is the abandonment of the cash water, you know, cash water for mechanism. Because what it was set up to do, I mean, we needed to have dedicated some amount of money into this model so that a, man, a, a power that is given out will be paid. But I think over the years, money that has gone into the model, it, 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 it found itself into other areas, you, you know, and that, that, that temptation is always there. When money is available and you don't channel it to the right source, is going to find its, itself some use other places else. So if the government is committing to coming back to the cash water, this uh, cash water for a uh, uh, cash water for mechanism, I think it's the right way to go. And that 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 was one of the areas that I believe, uh, among other factors, is one of the things that could help you know to minimize the debt, debt burden. Apart from the fact that we need to improve our efficiency in all the value streams, at least what we have been what, what we have collected, we need to be able to channel it. Okay. To key areas, and one of the key areas is to make sure that we meet some part of uh, uh, the money due due by the I mean due due, due I mean by by the IPPs. Yeah. All right. Or to uh, the IP. Yeah, you commended government for uh, its focus on the gas uptake issues, but then you are disappointed there was no cl uh, clarity on the future of the thermal oil refinery. Yes, uh, uh, that's a fact. And let me start with the gas, gas uptake mechanism. I know discussions are underway um, to be able to uh, ensure that, uh, because going forward, Talo is going to commercialize their gas fields. I mean, the gas that is coming from their fields. You know, over the years, Darryl, we have so much opportunity. Talo has given us over 200 billion cubic feet of gas, and that was free. That has come to an end. And so they have to commercialize the, 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 the next phase of it, which means that government has to make some commitment. And if you notice over the years, in the oil fields, for instance, and I'm saying it, 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 they should negotiate in good faith so that it will be a mutual beneficial situation. Because if they don't negotiate in good faith and, and it doesn't become a mutual beneficial situation, it's going to impact our oil production and also our revenue. Flow. And I'm saying that because in oil production, especially if you have associated wells, gas, a well that comes with gas, you need by, you need by, by all agencies and by all means to be able to display the gas in order to get the oil. Mm. 2009, Tello suffered drastically in terms of their production because of gas offtake issues. And the reason is that there was sacrifice in a way uh, because we had to take or pay with ENI, and so Tello was like free and we're not taking it. And it actually impacted their production. So going forward, 
is very passionate to me, uh, Dara, uh, because we need gas for our power product, our power generation. If there's anything that is impacting our power generation at this minute, now, it is gas. And so if you have gas availability, let's negotiate very well, get a good deal, and let's not repeat all mistakes that we, the old negotiation that we okay. did, that didn't guarantee China uh, any benefit. We don't have to repeat that. All right. Uh, just... 30 seconds. I just wanted to touch quickly on uh, fuel prices because we are just getting indication that um, some oil marketing prices, uh, oil marketing companies rather have increased prices uh, at the pumps. A diesel, a litre of diesel and petrol going for 12 CDs, 95 pesos. Uh, quick thoughts on that. Yeah, so um, it, it's typically what we've, what, what we've been talking about. Um, so this moment we ask what is, where is good? For, for oil, you know, where we have only been talking about. So typically what is happening now that is just because of uh, international dynamics. And that's why we are saying that this market is very well. Last time I granted the interview, I, I stated categorically that I didn't expect these oil prices to go beyond 80 in recent times, you know. But a lot of things have happened. China consumption is beginning to pick up, you know. So even not, not even this uh, quantitative tightening, you know, within the market that was able to hold it. And yet oil had Oil is now flattening around the 80s. In fact, it has crossed a little bit around the uh, over the 80s. So this international dynamics is what is directly feeding in, in, into our pumps. And that's why I always say that we have to have a cushion. I mean, we can't live by the dictates of international dynamics. If we don't have a cushion like a refinery, you, you know, we are always going to be impacted when this market shifts in any direction. All right. So yes, um, it's unfortunate, but that's, that's the reality. The international market is not that favorable at this many times, that all. All right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Isi Suleimana, the energy strategist, also CEO of Eureka and energy consultancy firm. Now, government has begun the process to restructure the country's pension funds worth 31 billion cities. It is therefore inviting holders of these bonds to exchange it for a new set of government papers. Here's more uh, from George Affe. The Finance Ministry, in a statement, noted that the invitation is intended to enable pension funds to preserve what government describes as their patrimonial value whilst exchanging eligible bonds for papers that offer more potential liquidity. The offer is targeted at pension funds that have been invested in Government of Ghana bonds, the ESLA PLC and the Dachi Trust PLC. The offer which started from yesterday is however expected to end on the 18th of this month. However, the Ministry of Finance maintains that it may extend the offer subject to how the exercise goes. Government earlier this year announced that it has reached an agreement with the public sector workers on how it should handle their pension funds going forward. However, it is not clear for now whether all the various unions are on board. With respect to these proposals, the government has tabled in its fresh debt exchange program for the pension funds. Meantime, government says it is expecting some positive results for most of the economic policies undertaken to stabilize the economy. Presenting the media budget uh, in Parliament, the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofriata, said Ghana will soon produce more domestic goods to replace imported ones. Here's more in this report. Dating Parliament on the policy measures implemented so far in the 2023 budget and fiscal year, Mr. Ofriata showed that efforts are being made to stabilize the economy. According to him, many of the policies will begin to yield results soon. We have turned the corner, and more importantly, we are determined to continue down that path. Soon, we expect the measures taking resulting in economic activity greater than anything experienced in the history of the Fourth Republic. Our plans and programs should soon lead to a sustained increase in domestic production, including manufacturing and farming, replacing many of the products that we are used to importing. The finance minister also hinted of plans to collaborate with the private sector to ensure a friendly business environment to attract both local and foreign investors. Develop the framework for the V20 Climate Prosperity Plan to attract climate investments from the private sector and initiated the mutual prosperity dialogue to crowd in domestic and extend our private investment to underpin our growth strategy. Despite challenges faced with revenue mobilization, government has decided to stay away from requesting for more funds. However, the minister announced a reduction in appropriation from 227.7 billion cities to 206 billion cities. 
On Zoom with us, uh, Associate Professor of Finance at the Andrews University in the U.S., uh, Professor Williams Park. Grateful you could join us. Uh, I want to first start with your view of the media budget presented by the Finance Minister yesterday. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Uh, good afternoon to your viewers. Um, if you ask me, um, this budget um, speaks to reality. Um, I will see that um, government is now admitting that um, its policies were not working in the past, um, especially admitting to reduce um, the GDP growth um, to a 1% um, percentage point. Um, this is very important. There was one also admission by um, government in the way um, the accounting is done. Um, it, uh, people are not paying attention to it, but to me it's very significant where the government admitted that now the accounting process is going to be done based on commitment basis. And what it means is that they are going to use the accrual concept in recognizing all kinds of liabilities um, into um, the, the budget preparation. That will really help us to ascertain um, the, the real um, levels of debt levels and be able to compute and know the actual figures. So um, these are my thoughts. Um, for me, um, at the DCR State, the government is admitting to reality that their policies in the past did not work, and they are now going to work to be able to make sure that the economy comes back to normality. Well, the finance minister is being criticized for saying that uh, we've turned the corner and things are improving, and at the same time, revising our GDP estimates. I mean, the, the fact is that where did we see the turn? The turn um, happened, or where did we see the change in, in, in the financial economic activities of Ghana? That was pre-COVID. So if the finance minister wants to say he has turned the corner, then it means that the economy by now would have gone back to the pre-COVID um, figures, then um, see a further reduction thereafter. Then I'm sure that you accept that he can see that he has turned the corner. But as we have seen, um, the economic indicators are not the same as 2019 economic indicators. So probably maybe he was speaking to, to give hope to Ghanaians for us to have um, faith in the economy and still contribute our quota. But we have not got into the stage where we can say that the economy, economic situation has turned around. Um, if you if you look at the figures coming from Ghana Statistical Service, um, we've seen that um, it's still uh, moving up a little bit. So if I were the finance minister, I would wait to, to have some figures that were pre-COVID um, financial indicators. Uh. Then I, I would be able to use the, the term turning the corner. Well, so the, the government did not ask for uh, more money as expected, but uh, the finance minister announced a 21 billion CD cut in total spending for uh, the next half of this year. How significant is this? I mean, this is very important. You, you know, we have all been talking about government reducing this expenditure. Um, we, we noticed from the budget that the government revenue, projected revenue, um, also, we are not um, sure of attaining the same revenue. So what, what is the prudent thing to do is to make sure that um, your expenditure is reduced. If you ask me, I will still expect government to work hard to reduce the expenditure even uh, more than the 21 billion and uh, that has been stated. Um, indeed, if they really want to achieve the set target for the GDP growth, that is the 1.2% um, or 1.5% that they have said, this will require a further reduction in expenditure. Um, so that uh, they will be able to achieve that set target. If not, um, this set target, if they continue with an uh, expansionary um, um, project, um, this cannot be achieved. So uh, I want us to listen to the former finance minister. He has cautioned that the, the nature of the media budget shows that government may not meet its revenue target again uh, in the next half of this year, uh, or in this second half, um, as we saw in the first half of this year. And Mr. Tekwa says government's inability to go to the international market to borrow also uh, makes the situation dire. Listen to him and I'll take your views on the other side. This is a country that has been doing tax reforms since the 1980s with VAT and everything. We lack the time to continue. But if you have mutilated the VAT and you want to, for example, 
removing uh, uh, debt fund and NHIL, you know, from the base, and then denying input tax credits and refund to businesses, and it's increasing costs and causing inflation. If you want to come back to uh, the old structure of the VAT, you have to do it over, spread it over a period of time, because otherwise you are going to disturb your December scenario if you rush it. So that's why I said we are in a, in a structural mode. And let me also reemphasize. so that is revenue. Expenditure, there's a chance to reduce, you know, flagship projects. And even you can see in this review, a long list of them. Now we are using revenue, total revenue to pay compensation and interest, even when we default with interest. So where is, where are you going to get a borrowing? Even in our own domestic markets, non, no residents are visited. So what are you going to do the borrowing to support this? Because all your revenue, I can bet between now and the end of the year, and given that we don't have the assets, you know, to uh, to borrow from the bond market, domestic and external market, but get something from only multilaterals, basically, which will be substantive. It means that you are not in a position yet, you know, to even borrow to support those initiatives in the next one year. And remember, there is a cap. There's a cap, as we had, 500 million annually commercial borrowing. That's all you can do for commercial borrowing, with the exception of, you know, the soft ones like the World Bank and the IMF, you know, uh, African Development Bank, you know, which flow in. Otherwise, if you want to do something substantive, you have to go and get a waiver, mm -hmm. you know, from the IMF board. Right, these are the really, we've done IMF programs, so we should bring those things, experiences into perspective, into perspective. because they are not going to change. That uh, was the former finance minister, Sir Tekwe. Do you agree with him? I think um, he's right um, on point. Um, what he has mentioned is true. Um, he's speaking from experience. Um, the data also speaks to it that um, from the rate things are going, it's likely that um, you will not be able to achieve the the, the set revenue targets. In, so in, in 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 economics and in finance, there's something we call the Levine curve. Sometimes when you when you increase your uh, your tax rates so high, it gets to a point it becomes disincentives. So that is where we have got into. Um, the tax rates in Ghana are very high, and people are rather instead of uh, seeking ways to avoid or evade um, and payment of taxes. And this is one of the reasons why we've seen um, a sharp reduction in, 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 in the revenue for, if we cannot go to the international market because we don't have the ability to pay. So as for that one, it's not something that we can, we can really um, have a discussion on it, as he mentioned. Um, so if I were the government, um, I, I will still continue with the um, tax revenues measures that were implemented with a compliance approach and get the GRE officers to go on the field, mm. stay in, in offices of companies and manufacturing firms and institutions to make sure that the people are being compliant and paying the right taxes. That is the only way to probably to increase the revenue. Um, if government fails to do that, I mean, it's going to get worse in, a, in our revenue fall because once the tax rate goes high, all players will start to thinking of how do we avoid or evade tax. So, and where we have gotten to a 22% of our VAT tax, uh, uh, corporate tax being increased, you've seen the financial sector not very um, significantly uh, in, uh, improved. So these measures will really uh, are going to affect revenue generations unless it is through compliance. One okay. other significant thing, the property tax, uh, and we have not seen it uh, really significant. If government can ensure that um, company, um, individuals also own and asset property start to pay the property tax. This can also increase the, 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 the tax revenue in Ghana. All right, I, just a minute. I want to ask you about uh, one of our top stories today to do with uh, a government indicating that it has begun the process of uh, restructuring the pension funds worth 31 billion cities. What are the implications? I mean, um, this was to come, just that it was delayed. Uh, the implication is that um, it's going to affect um, payment of um, um, pensioners and their due um, when, when, when a lot of people go on retirement. 
Um, that is the implication. So, and probably we may also see it may cause a restructuring in, in the pension um, um, fund um, uh, processes in Ghana. Uh, I'm sure SNIT um, through it may also have to come out with a, um, a strategy to be able to find a sustainability. If not, um, we may also see SNIT um, uh, pos posing a significant losses yeah. in the coming years, which is really going to affect um, the, the financial sector and also pensioners. So that, that, that is the, the, the major issue I see that at the end of the day, the individual pensioner is the one going to suffer. For us who are very young, um, we may not see the impact now, but those who are already on pension or preparing to go on, on retirement, we may see that they will be they will be suffering from um, getting their funds paid to them when they go on retirement. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Williams Yupa. He's Associate Professor of Finance at the Andrews University in the U.S. Before we go, ratings agency Fitch has affirmed Ghana's credit rating at restrictive default. The rating is coming after the country received an international monetary fund program uh, in May, unlocking the fund's board approval for a $3 billion three-year extended credit facility. Here's more in this report. Fitch downgraded Ghana's rating to restrictive default from C on 21st February 2023, following the expiration of the grace period for a merged eurobond coupon payment. According to the rating agency, the country has since made progress with official creditors for a restructuring of its external debts under the G20 Common Framework. It said authorities are looking to restructure $20 billion of external debt, including official bilateral debt, euro bonds, among others. It continued that financing assurances have been provided by the official creditor committee at its first meeting on 12 May, unlocking the IMF board approval for a $3 billion three year extended credit facility. Fitch therefore expects the committee to reach an agreement with the government by the end of 2023 and a treatment of private creditors' claims on comparable terms by mid-2024. The IMF estimates the financing from external debt restructuring must amount to $10.5 billion between 2023 and 2026. Like we indicated, uh, fuel prices have gone up. Petrol or diesel selling at 12 cities, 95 pesos a litre. You can read more on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time tomorrow.